Today we're talking about the famous Carl Zeiss Sonar Clone 85F2, the Russian copy called a Jupiter 9. These lenses are really affordable and should suit everybody's budget. Now I know what you're thinking, there's a lot of Leica followers on this channel and we like precision, beautifully made, all the nice things that come in Leica. But look at this photo. Would you be happy if you took this photo with your Leica camera? Perhaps you don't like girls. What about if it was a cat? Look at the rendering of this lens. If you're like me and you just want to make a photo that looks better than reality, stay tuned because this lens might be for you. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So yes, today we're talking about the Soviet Jupiter 9 85mm f2. I'll tell you a bit of information and then I'll show you some example photos and then stay with me until the end. And I'll do a quick comparison against the Leica Summicron 90mm f2 preaspherical and the lens that I recently tested, the brand new 7 Artisans Spectrum 85 f2. Let's jump into the video. Okay, so first, some facts. If you're going to look for this lens on eBay, be a bit careful because there are quite a few different versions. This lens was made from approximately 1960 to 1990s. As I mentioned, it's based on the original Carl Zeiss Sonar 85 f2. And so it's a 15 aperture blade, seven elements in three groups. The early ones were rangefinder coupled. The later ones were made for SLR cameras. Obviously, if you shoot mirrorless, the same as me with the Leica SL, you can use either. You just need the correct adapters. The early ones you could buy in Leica screw mount L39, or you could get a Contax RF mount. The one I've got is Contax RF, which means it fits on a Kiev rangefinder camera or a Contax rangefinder camera both the same mount. See my recent blog post on the Kiev cameras if you want to get yourself a cheap range from a camera. Later versions were then made in M39 and M42, so SLR, not range from a cupboard. All the different variants give a similar look, but there are a few differences. So the range from a lens, such as the one I've got, will only focus as close as 1.15 meters, which is the same for screw mount and Contax RF. The SLR lenses, which were made for the early Zenit cameras, they will focus as close as 0.8 meters. How do you tell the difference at a glance? The early versions were the polished aluminium, i.e. like a silver color, and the later ones were black. So as you can see, mine's silver with the, the blue lens coating. Okay, we're at the character of this lens. Now I need to talk about theoretical compared to actual, because I've got a bit of a, a wonky copy, uh, not a good copy. So what I'm getting from mine is going to be different to what you'll get if you're using a clean copy of the lens. So across all versions, I guess the most famous reason for buying this lens is it is a great portrait lens because of the bokeh. It's got the classic sonar bokeh, which generally means very nice pictures. So you get the nice kind of bubble bokeh as you see in this image. The Jupiter 9 gives really, really smooth out of focus areas and will still give you bokeh kind of f4, f5.6, as you can see in these examples. In terms of vignetting, being an 85 f2, there's pretty much little or no vignetting. When it comes to lens sharpness, this lens is said to be not that sharp wide open. However, I only shot this lens wide open for all the portraits I'm going to show you, and I was more than happy with using it at f2. As for contrast, this is not a high contrast lens, partly because it flares very easily. I would recommend using a lens hood, or do what I did and shade the lens with your hand to try to get the worst of the flare. If you're shooting towards bright sources of light, you'll definitely get flare and a loss of contrast and a loss of detail. If you want to use a hood, this lens takes a 49mm hood. And what about colors? Again, I can't really tell you how nice the colors should be on this lens. My copy of this lens gives a yellow tinge across all photos. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that, but it's defective regardless. Okay, so let's now look at some photos. If you saw my last YouTube video on the 7 Artistans Cine lens, the 85 f2, you saw me teaching a workshop in the UK, and I mentioned that I also had the Jupiter 9 lens with me. These photos are all shot with the Jupiter 9, and I actually prefer the rendering from the Jupiter 9 compared to the, the brand new 7 Artistans lens. As someone who loves film, if ever I can get a filmic look from a digital camera, I'm obviously going to be really happy. This lens gives a really, how to say, like organic look, imperfect, but I just really like it, even though I've got a really dodgy copy. So now I'm tempted to get a better version of the same lens to do like a better job next time. All these photos are shot with the Leica SL camera with the Jupiter 9 85 f2 shot at f2 in RAW with a Mr. Leica black and white preset applied. 
as always if you want to copy my presets i can put a link in the description below and also if you're someone who's got really nice portrait lenses the same as this click the first link in the description to get a copy of my free ebook and that'll tell you how to go about finding models and organizing your own photo shoots and then you really can start taking the same photos as these with a very cheap russian lens Okay, so a bit of backstory before we finished. I bought this lens on eBay with good faith that it was supposed to be a decent copy. It looked very nice from the photos, the angle of the lens, so you could only see the nice blue coating. Lens arrived, and then as soon as he looked at the lens, I knew I was going to have a problem. As you can see, it seems like it's lens coating damage, where there's a lack of blue on one side. If you're an expert on old lenses in terms of the what goes wrong with them, let me know in the description what you think this may be. So these are photos shooting at the sun with the lens wide open. Here's the lens stopped down and the flare just got even worse. So I wrote to the eBay and said, it's not quite as you described in the listing. And I think the guy knew that he'd pulled a fast one and just sent me a full refund. These photos you may have seen on social media so with a preset and then finished off in Photoshop. It just looks a bit different, a bit special, a bit old. <laughs> So if you can do that with a very damaged lens, then pretty good, I say. <laughs> get, get yourself a cheap damaged lens from eBay. And then as promised, how does the Jupiter 9 compare to my Leica Summicron 90mm f2 pre-spherical? It's not quite as sharp as the Leica, and the colours of the Leica are obviously much better. The 90mm is one of my best longer lenses for portraits for the Leica system. And I think the Jupiter 9 is pretty good. It's less perfect in many ways in terms of probably micro contrast sharpness build quality uh, most things however it probably does nicer bokeh and it's cheap you can buy these lenses on ebay for around 100 pounds to 200 pounds and then for you m shooters how to use this lens on a m camera so you need to either get the l39 mount which is easy because it's just range to find them out get a screw mount to m mount adapter option one you can get the contacts Kiev mount, which is the one I've got. You'll need a contacts to like an M mount rangefinder adapter. That will allow you to use your in camera rangefinder. The third option is to use a cheap adapter from eBay, non rangefinder coupled, such as the one I'm showing you here. That will work with an M camera if you're using an EVF, or it'll work fine, obviously, on a like SL, like a CL. It won't allow you to use your rangefinder for focusing. And then as mentioned at the start, if you get the M42 one, that will work with any M42 to your camera mount adapter. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. As always, a massive thanks to my awesome patrons. Feel free to subscribe. And if you want to see another affordable lens, watch this video next.